Hi, this is lecture 14 of M triple two three. So, in last session, we have uh, discussed the notion of bounded functions and uh, monotone functions. And maybe much before that, we should say that uh, we are we were interested in functions, uh, say f from u to r, that preserves some certain kind of sequences. Uh, let me recall, given a function f from u to r, I must be u subset of r, f from u to r, we have a corresponding map that takes sequence in u to sequence in r. We said we are interested in functions that preserve certain uh, sequences. He, uh, we mentioned about four, four type of sequences. One is convergent sequences, uh, monotone sequences, bounded sequences, and Cauchy sequences. We discussed enough in enough detail about uh, three uh, class of sequences. Convergent sequences, we have said so many things. It's about continuous functions. I mean, for bounded sequences, we, we we talked about bounded functions that in ways preserve uh, bounded sequences. And then we mentioned about uh, monotone functions. Maybe it is very straightforward, but but check check for yourself whether monotone functions says anything about uh, modern sequences. So, we, we, we covered uh, three class of sequences, uh, convergence uh, sequences, modern sequences, bound sequences. What is remaining for us is uh, Cauchy sequences. So, uh, so, we start this session uh, thinking about uh, functions that preserve Cauchy sequences. Uh, let me write down this again, u is subset of r. Uh, we are asking that this function should preserve uh, Cauchy sequences. If I take Cauchy, if I take a sequence, if I take a, an element here which is a Cauchy sequence, the image should be a Cauchy sequence. This is what we are uh, trying to uh, see. One question that uh, that should arise at this point is, see, Cauchy sequences are uh, same thing as convergent sequences in R. So any function that preserves convergent sequences should also preserve Cauchy sequences. It looks like that is the case. Uh, let us see if that is the case. Functions that preserving uh, convergent sequences with some extra condition are called continuous functions. So let us start with the uh, setup that uh, this f is a continuous function. And let us see if this function f preserves Cauchy sequences or not. That is a very, very reasonable question to ask because this is anyways preserving uh, convergent sequences. Not just preserving, it is a slightly extra also. So, let us ask if uh, this continuous function preserve uh, Cauchy sequences or not. So, so, let us take a Cauchy sequence, Xn is a Cauchy sequence inside U. And uh, one question to ask is, I mean, the, the question that we are trying to ask is, is the image f of Xn is the image uh, a Cauchy sequence in uh, R or not? Now, we want to apply the property of continuous function uh, to to this sequence but uh, we we only know how to apply uh, continuity to sequences that converge to some element inside u right that only then one can talk about we take the corresponding image f of xn converse f of a that is that is the, the usual definition of continuous function but here we only have a, a sequence we do not know whether it is convergent or we do not know whether it is convergent to some element in u. All we know is that Xn is a Cauchy sequence. It is a sequence in u, u is subset of R, so it is a sequence in R. R has a property, every Cauchy sequence in R is a convergent sequence, which means there is an element A belongs to R, A is an element in R such that Xn converts to A. So, we got a convergent sequence. Uh, now one can apply this uh, uh, this function f. Uh, one can apply here for the sequence, but unless I know that uh, this element a is an element of u, I cannot apply the continuous uh, the, the sequence version because I should write I should be writing f of a, and I don't know what is what is this. I mean, if you depend only on u, so I don't know what, what is f of a if a is not an element of u. One way to get rid of this uh, the disturbance is to go back and uh, change the setup here slightly. See, the situation here is the following. I have a sequence xn in u. I know it converge, but I do not know whether the limit is inside u or not. That is the problem. 
So, how do we fix the problem? We just ask that uh, any sequence in U that converge the limit point should be inside U, the, the limit should be inside U. This is an extra condition, this is not true uh, always. Let us let us just check once. Uh, take the set 0, 1, it is subset of R, take the sequence 1 by n, 1 by n sequence is a sequence in, in, in 0, 1 and it converts to 0. See uh, this whole sequence is inside this set, but uh, this limit is not here. So, there, there are there are uh, uh, subsets of R where which satisfy this property, there is a sequence in, in, in that set, but it converge also but uh, this limit is not inside this. So, this is a such situation. I have already mentioned about this, I, I, I said it is closed, but I am repeating it again. So, so here we are asking that uh, this u is such that for every sequence in u that converge, the limit of the sequence should be inside u. This kind of subsets of R are called uh, closed subsets. So, a, a subset u of R is said to be closed if for every sequence x n in u, if I know that it converge, this limit should be inside u. This is what a subset of R being closed means. And when we have seen a subset here, uh, this is not closed. We have a sequence inside this subset uh, that converge. This limit is uh, not uh, here, right? So we ask for this extra condition that we, we ask that u is a closed subset. So, because the because x n is Cauchy, it converges. So, let a be the limit of that Cauchy sequence. Because u is closed, this limit should be inside u. So, we have a sequence in u that converges to some element in u. Now, one can, one can apply the uh, continuous property of uh, this f. What does it give? It says the corresponding sequence also converges to f of a the corresponding sequence also converge, it converges to f of a. See, we, we are not uh, interested in the convergence, we are interested only in the Cauchy property of any convergence sequence is Cauchy sequence. So, in, in particular, this f x n, the corresponding sequence is a Cauchy sequence. So, continuous function, if it, if it, if the domain is closed, then it for sure preserve Cauchy sequences. So, let me write down that once, u subset of r is closed, this is necessary because I, I do not know uh, uh, how to proceed from here. If I relax this condition, I do not know how to proceed from here. It may be true that even though u is not uh, closed, it might preserve Cauchy sequences, one can uh, come with such, such kind of continuous functions, but it is not true in general. If, if I do not know that uh, u is closed, I cannot apply this idea to conclude uh, anything about uh, Cauchy sequence preserv preserving. So, u is subset of R uh, that is closed subset in, in this sense, then any continuous function preserve Cauchy sequences. And uh, if I know that a function preserve Cauchy sequences, does it all does it uh, imply anything about uh, continuity? Yeah, you, you just think about it and uh, I will write in the notes anyways. But before checking the notes, you, you, you think about the, the following case. See, here we have seen continuity plus domain being closed implies the property of Cauchy sequence preserving. Now, let us do the other way also. Suppose I know I have a function f from u to r and uh, it preserves Cauchy sequences. Does it always imply that uh, f is continuous function or do I have to put some extra condition on the domain r on the function that, that uh, concludes that uh, f is continuous function? If I am studying the assumption that f, f preserve Cauchy sequences. Now, look at the recall what we have done for the case of uh, bounded sequences. We said uh, not every continuous function, it is not very clear whether every continuous function is preserved bounded sequences. So, then we, we asked that uh, maybe we should uh, think about uh, bounded functions. Bounded functions always preserve bounded sequences. Here, we said continuous function, if the domain is closed, then it preserves Cauchy sequences. We, we will do the same similar thing here also. We think of, we will uh, introduce some, some function that preserve Cauchy sequences without the assumption that uh, the domain is closed. 
uh, or th that is the idea. We are, we are looking for functions that preserve Cauchy sequences without the assumption that uh, that u is a closed subset of R. See this we have done in case of uh, Bonnet functions also. That is how Bonnet functions are, uh, are uh, uh, introduced without without any assumption on the on the domain. Uh, we have we have seen that uh, if a function is bounded, it always preserves bounded sequence to it always sends the bounded sequence to bounded sequence. So here we will try to do the same thing. We we are looking for uh, functions that preserve Cauchy sequences without the assumption that uh, u is a closed subset of uh, R. We get some sequence some functions which doesn't satisfy which is uh, which which satisfies more than uh, Cauchy sequence preserving. It, it is slightly more than that, but it for sure preserves Cauchy sequences. That kind of functions are called as a uh, uniform continuous functions. We will see the definition now. So, the, the setup is a uh, u subset of R, if it is not from u to R, we say that f is a uniform continuous function if for any two sequences in u, x n is a sequence in u, y n is a sequence in u. See, we are not asking anything about uh, their convergence. In, in case of continuity, we asked that uh, we, we, we discussed only with one, one uh, sequence, here we are doing, dealing with two sequences. That one sequence was convergent, it converges to some element in the in, uh, in u. Here we are, do, we are doing uh, something different. We are taking two sequences in u nothing to do with the, their convergence, but the condition is that uh, these two sequences, the difference of these two sequences which is uh, the sequence x n minus y n, we want this sequence to converge and we want it to converge to the 0 element of R, it comes to 0. Then, then we want, see uh, this sequence in u, if I, if I apply f, I get a sequence in R that is f of x n. Similarly, you have f of y n. So, what we are asking is for any two sequences in u whose difference goes to 0, the, for the corresponding sequences, for the corresponding image sequences, the difference should go to 0. This is this is what we are uh, we mean when we are when we say that f is a uniform continuous function. I will repeat one more time, u subset of R, if it is not from u to R, we say that f is uniformly continuous if for any two sequences in u with the condition that their difference converts to 0, then for the corresponding images, images sequences, their difference converts to 0. See, uh, <laughs> I am saying it is uniformly continuous, but uh, it is not a very clear way. It is, it is not very clear just on the, this definition that uh, it is anyways uh, related to continuous function. This is uh, an adjective that we are uh, adding for a continuous function. So, it should at least be continuous function, right? otherwise why would I ask uniform plus continuity. Let us first see whether uh, such functions are continuous or not. So, let us let us uh, take a fun, con, uh, uniform continuous function f from u to r. Uh, I am assuming it is a uh, uniform continuous as I said just now. Uh, now we are looking, uh, we, are, we are trying to see whether it is continuous or not. So, to check continuity, what we want? An element in u and a sequence in a, a, a sequence x n in u that converts to a. We, we, we should check for we should check for some condition that holds for every sequence in u that converts to a. Now, see observe that uh, in case of uniform continuous functions, we have we, we start with two sequences, right? But here we are asking we are we have only one sequence. How do I get a second sequence? And uh, that is also not any arb arbitrary sequence that sequence that I am writing here say y n, it need not be convergent, but uh, this difference should converge to 0, that is that, what we should we, we should uh, come up with. See given given this element a belongs to u, one can take the corresponding constant sequence, right? this uh, this a 
A is a constant sequence that converts to A, but it is not relevant because in case of uniform continuity, we are not asking that any of these are convergent, we are only asking that difference is uh, converging to 0. So, let us see what is the difference here. The, the difference of these two sequences is the sequence Xn minus A, this is the sequence. Uh, and uh, what do you think this converts to? Xn goes to A. So, the, the difference uh, should go to A minus A, right. This we have seen uh, in the case of when we are dealing with a uh, uh, sequence of real numbers, converging, se converging sequence of real numbers, we have seen that if, it, if there are two sequences that converts to two different elements, uh, their difference converts to the corresponding difference. So, here Xn converts to A, A converts to A. So, the difference converts to 0. So, now one can apply the this condition that we assumed f is uniform continuous, we took we have two sequences, one is x in, or the other is the, con, uh, the constant sequence, we have seen that the, the difference goes to 0, then it should imply that for the corresponding uh, images, we have the convergence to be 0. So, the, uh, the sequence f x n minus the corresponding sequence f a, this is the constant sequence, this is the sequence that is coming from the this sequence x n. We say that this converts to 0. Now, see this is a, this is a sequence, the, 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 this whole thing is a, is a single sequence. Observe that uh, this component is a constant. I leave it to you to check that uh, if I have a such situation that uh, I have I have a I have a sequence B n uh, and the difference and the I have a some uh, real number P such that B n minus P goes to C then B n goes to P plus C. This is a convergence sequence if I know if I fix a real number here and I know that the difference uh, sequence B n is some arbitrary sequence. If I know that B n minus P converts to C, then B n converts to P plus C. See, from here to here it is easy. That if, if B n converts to P plus C, you simply take the corresponding, uh, you, you fix a point P and take the corresponding constant sequence. And uh, we already know that if I, if I take a, if, if, if I take a two sequences, here it is a B n, here it is a constant sequence P the difference converts to their difference, see P, the constant sequence P converts to P only, right. So, P plus C uh, minus P is uh, just C. So, if I know this, then this is clear, but I am asking that uh, if, I, if, uh, if I know that B n minus P converts to C, then B n converts to P plus C. This is not very, this is not difficult at all. I am just saying, it, 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 you need to think for, uh, think for one or two minutes. So, here, here that is what the case. We have a sequence f x n and some constant here such that the difference sequence goes to 0, then f x n goes to according to this f a plus 0. So, f of x n converts to f a and this is what we want for continuity, right. For any sequence in u that converts to the element a that we have started with, we have the image sequence converts to f of a. So, it, it is not just by mistake that we are add, adding the adjective here, it is really true that uh, this is a this is a special case of continuous function. Every uniform continuous function is a continuous function. Now, uh, let, let us go back to the previous uh, discussion. What was it? We are, we are looking for functions that preserve Cauchy sequences, right. Uh, and then we said this is the candidate. If, we, if you do not want to add that uh, the domain is uh, closed, we said this is the candidate, but uh, we got diverted and said uh, that uh, uh, we discussed about continuity, continuity of uniform continuous functions. Uh, so, so we will we'll go back to that again. Now, see one thing we need to check here is again whether every continuous function we said uniform continuity implies continuity. Now, the question is is every continuous function a uniform continuous function? This is, is this true? This is true, we have seen just now. Uh, an obvious question is whether this is true. So, keep this in mind, keep this question in mind, we will come back to this uh, soon. 
or maybe I'll write down something in the lecture notes. So, but, but this, this will be uh, keep in mind. And uh, yeah, I don't want to say anything more now. We'll come back to this. So we, we are we are uh, we came up with the, the, this this function, this kind of function, uh, keeping in mind that we want uh, Cauchy sequence to be preserved without other, uh, any assumption on the uh, domain U. So let us see if this is the case or not. So let us take a U subset of R, f from U to R is continuous, uniform continuous. Then let us see if it preserves uh, Cauchy sequence or not. So let us let us take a uh, Cauchy sequence in U. We are we are checking if uh, this is a Cauchy sequence or not or, or not. This is a Cauchy sequence uh, uh, or not. Okay. Now, so what do what do you mean when we say this is a Cauchy sequence uh, given epsilon positive? There exists a n belongs to n such that for every n comma m equal to n, we have f x n minus f x m is a less than epsilon, right? If I want to show that this is a Cauchy sequence, this is what we are supposed to show. That uh, given epsilon positive, there exists a n belongs to n such that whenever n comma m are greater than n, this f x n and f x m are the, the difference is less than epsilon. Now, how do I how do I uh, uh, prove this? All I know is uh, this section is a Cauchy sequence in U. See, if I assume U is closed, then the, the then there is no question at all because the uh, uniform continuous functions are continuous functions. Continuous function with closed domain always preserve Cauchy sequences. So th that that's not what we want to do. We don't want to uh, assume U is closed. So we, we without assuming U is closed, uh, we are trying to see whether it, whether it preserve Cauchy sequence or not. Extend the Cauchy sequence for this epsilon positive. Of course, there is a n belongs to n such that may not may not, may not, may not be the same n. Uh, I will write down that. So, given for the same epsilon positive, there exists a n tilde belongs to n such that whenever n comma m are greater than n tilde, we have x n minus x m is a less than epsilon, right? This is this is what uh, we have. But uh, unfortunately, the notion of uniform continuous function, the whatever we have uh, mentioned here, it deals with only uh, sequences. But uh, whatever we are trying to do here, it looks like uh, the, the corresponding version of epsilon level definition of continuous function. So maybe, uh, it, it, maybe it is necessary to write down the epsilon delta version of uniform continuous function then maybe we can use that that idea here here we have this uh, some difference thing right this should remind you uh, what happens for the epsilon definition of uh, continuous function so we will we'll write down that wa uh, what does it mean to say function is a uniform continuous function and then we will apply it here hopefully it will work uh, how do we know we will just write down and see if it is working or not so Ideally, this should be it should be an exercise for you to come up with the definition of uh, epsilon definition of uniform continuous function, because we have already seen the the uh, in the case of continuous function, we have seen the corresponding between, between two notions. One is sequence version, one is epsilon delta version. Here I mentioned about sequence version. Where is it? Yeah, here I mentioned about sequence version. So ideally, you should be able to write down the corresponding epsilon delta uh, description, but uh, but anyways, I'll write down. Uh, I'll write down the definition only. But I leave it to check. Uh, the, these two are actually same. There is a, there is a uh, these two notions are actually same for a uniform continuous function. So let me write down that a function f from u to r set to be uniformly continuous with respect to epsilon uh, uh, description. If something happens, what is it? Given epsilon positive, there is a delta positive such that whenever two elements of u are that's why this property. Then, the corresponding image should satisfy this property. This is this is what uh, it is about uh, uniform continuity. Observe the, the similarity. See, in case of continuity, the sequence version, we fix the point in U, 
and and took the and took some sequence uh, that comes to a to to the point. But in case of uniform uniform continuous function, we didn't fix any point. We we fixed two we took two sequences with uh, this uh, condition. Uh, it's not very clear why this should imply that uh, these two are convergent. It's it's not true also. Uh, so so that is the difference. Here also, we are not fixing any element in u. We are we are only saying, given epsilon positive, there is a delta such that for any two elements in u with this property, we have this condition. So this is the uniform continuous description using epsilon delta uh, version. Now one one thing to do is that uh, to check that these two are actually same, this version and the version I mentioned here. Uh, are actually same. Uh, th this should not take so much time. Whatever you have done for continuous function, you just copy paste it here. You 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 get this uh, this equivalence. Now we need to apply uh, this idea to see if uniform continuous function preserve uh, Cauchy sequences or not. So now, if is uniform continuous, that is fine. That we are starting with. F is from u to r is uniformly continuous, and uh, we, we action is sequence uh, Cauchy sequence in u. We are looking at the corresponding image sequence, whether it is Cauchy sequence or not. So uh, what we should do is given uh, epsilon positive, we should do something. But given epsilon positive, this function gives some something here, a delta positive with some condition. You should have you should have guessed what I'm going to do now. Here, I applied the Cauchy sequence of uh, Cauchy property of x n for the for the epsilon positive. This I've done many times before also. Uh, we should we should apply the Cauchy sequence or convergence or, or, or anything for the delta, not the epsilon. Right? You check the notes. Uh, this this uh, small trick we have used uh, at least three four times till now. So, given epsilon positive, use in home continuity and uh, look for a delta with some conditions. Now, so we will take that delta that we got from uniform continuity. Now, apply that x n is convergence for uh, x n is Cauchy with uh, with this delta. So, what do we get for uh, for this element that is positive because x n is Cauchy sequence, there exists a n belongs to n such that whenever n comma m R greater than equal to n, we have x n minus x m less than delta. Now apply the epsilon delta uh, description that we have mentioned here. For any two sequences in U, if the difference is less than delta, for the corresponding uh, images, the difference is less than epsilon. Here we have two elements of U whose difference is less than delta because if it is uniform continuous we should have this. Now <laughs> ignore, ignore this part and this part also given epsilon positive there is n belongs to n such that whenever n comma m are greater than n we have f x n minus f x m is less than epsilon. What does this say that, uh, that f x n is Cauchy. So, what did we observe here? Even though we, we did not put any condition on uh, u being closed, just uniform continuity says that uh, any Cauchy sequence in uh, u, the, the image should be a Cauchy sequence uh, uh, as I mentioned just now. So, uniform continuous function takes Cauchy sequences in the domain to Cauchy sequences in, the, in, the, uh, in R. Now, one obvious question to ask here is, uh, 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 is this property determines the uniform continuity, which means, is it true that every function that preserves Cauchy sequences should be uniformly continuous? That, that is the obvious question to ask, that uh, Cauchy sequence preserving 
does it imply that function is uniformly continuous? Give a try to see the this implication whether it is true or not, and uh, and and then uh, look at the notes. In the, in the video, I'm not saying anything uh, about this, and and also the uh, uh, I I'll do some examples of of uh, uniform continuous function, uh, but I'll not do in this video. In the in the next to next video, we'll do some examples of uniform continuous function. Some are uh, uniform continuous, some are not uniform continuous. And uh, yeah, this I need to mention now before I forget. Uh, we didn't do uh, many examples of some computations of uh, convergence uh, or uh, infimum supremum computation uh, or uh, uh, looking for uh, some simple being Cauchy. So uh, in the next two sessions, not this one, next to next lecture 15, lecture 16. These are only for examples. We'll do uh, so enough examples to understand whatever we have discussed till now. So lecture 1 to 14, we have done some examples, but uh, uh, I, I think it is necessary to, to have two classes only for examples. So lecture 15, I will do examples about uh, uh, sequences of real numbers, infimum, supremum, uh, their convergence and uh, looking for uh, sequence being bounded, uh, sequence being Cauchy, convergent, monotone, all that. Then lecture 16, we will do some examples of checking a function being continuous. Uh, uniform continuous and uh, yeah that is all, continuous, continuous function some examples, some non examples, uniform continuous function some examples, some non examples. Uh, so this is what we will we'll be doing in the lecture 15 and lecture 16. So there I might mention about uh, this also, so uh, yeah so that is what we will be covering in the next uh, two sessions, we will come back to this again. Uh, so now what, what we have discussed till now? Is the is the notion of uh, function preserving Cauchy sequences, and the notion of uh, function being uniform continuous. We, and we also seen uniform continuous function uh, preserve Cauchy sequences without the assumption on u being closed. So so this should suggest you that whatever the property of a property of a function of a continuous function, whatever the property it preserve, assuming u is closed, it is true here without the, that condition. See, we had uh, one result in case of continuous function. A continuous function that is uh, closed, the domain of that is closed and the bounded u subset of r and uh, f is continuous. Then we said it is bounded. So, see, see observe that uh, here we are we are asking we are uh, talking about some some preserve some property of continuous function which is true. Even if we do not assume uh, u is uh, the domain is closed, so maybe even if we do not assume that domain is closed, uniform if I assume it is uniform continuous, it might imply it is bounded. We do not know whether it is true or not, but we are just doing uh, we are just uh, uh, hoping for whatever is uh, true for previous property of Cauchy sequences, it is true for uh, this property of bounded, bounded uh, function also. See, th that is how I want to. Uh, that is how I want to think and it will be useful uh, many times. In case of uh, uniform continuous function, the properties are following. Even if I assume u is not closed, it preserves Cauchy sequences, uh, it preserve, it takes Cauchy sequence to Cauchy sequence. But if I, if I think only uniform continuous function, I need the assumption that u is closed, Th keep it aside. Now, uh, look at the, the, the corresponding theorem for a continuous function. Continuous function with a closed and bounded domain implies that it is bounded, bounded function. Now, suppose uniform continuous are, are really that good, whatever the, uh, whatever the nice thing happened for, for cost sequences, you should have, it should happen here also. Even if I assume that uh, it is not closed, if I assume it is uniformly continuous, then it should imply it is bounded. I mean, in a very nice situation, this should this should be the case. Let us check that. If now I am not assuming u is closed, I am assuming only it is bounded. If I assume you that, uh, that that u is bounded, then uh, we are looking at the case where f is uniform continuous and uh, see if it is bounded or not. Suppose suppose it is uh, it is not bounded, then what happens? What what does it mean? that uh, this image is uh, not bounded. 
and th this is the case. What does it mean? For any element, uh, for any m positive, for uh, m positive, there exists a uh, element x belongs to U such that f of x is a uh, and m are uh, related in some sense. In what sense? Uh, in this sense. See, I am assuming f is a positive and also I am not writing any, any mod here. Otherwise, you write mod whatever. See, I have to I have to make use of uh, this being uniformly continuous. So so now so now what? I should get a either either a, I should look at for two sequences in U that converge to something, or uh, uh, or look for something. So we are looking for a for a sequence in U. Then we'll try to see whether we can apply that uh, uniform continuous property for those sequence or uh, or anything like that. So here we have we have uh, uh, an element for each positive uh, real number. The same trick we have used multiple times before. Whenever we have this condition, this gives a sequence in uh, U. How? For every n belongs to uh, natural numbers, there exists a x n, or maybe I'll write down this a small n. X n belongs to U such that f of x n is uh, greater than n. Right? This is this is what. Uh, uh, this is what it is. Now, x n is a is an element in U, so this gives a sequence in U. x n is a sequence inside U. Now, what U? Uh, what is it? U is a bounded subset of R. We have said this before also. The same trick. <laughs> U is a bounded subset. X is a sequence inside U, so it has a uh, so X is a bounded sequence. Any bounded sequence will have a convergent subsequence. So let me write down that Y n is a sequence in U and it converges. Now what? Every convergent sequence is a is a Cauchy sequence. If it is uniformly continuous, so it should preserve Cauchy sequences. It should take Cauchy sequence to Cauchy sequence. So this says that uh, f y n is a Cauchy sequence, right? This is this is a Cauchy sequence inside R. One can directly say that uh, uh, with this, this is this is not going to happen. This is the same trick that we have we have uh, mentioned uh, before also. Uh, closed and bounded implies uh, bounded. For that, we have used the same trick. We assume that it, uh, the, the, the f of u is not bounded. We we came up with some uh, 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 some sequence in u because u is bounded. There is a convergent subsequence because u is closed. There is a limit. We applied the continuity because to talk about uh, to apply continuity, we need a sequence and a convergent sequence. But here we we are using uh, it is a Cauchy sequence. That is that is the only difference. X is a sequence in u because u is uh, bounded. X is a bounded sequence. Every bounded sequence has a convergent subsequence. So this I am writing as a uh, the convergent subsequence that the of of X n, and then we apply the we do the same thing that if y is coming from some R, right? Uh, I do that again. R is a map from n to n that relates uh, these two sequences. Then f of X n is greater than n. This should imply. F of y n because uh, because uh, y n is subsequence of R uh, of x n. This is greater than n. F y n is a Cauchy sequence in R. It's convergent, but this says it is not bounded. Any convergent sequence is a bounded sequence, but uh, this says it's not bounded sequence. So that is the that is the contradiction. So again, then the nice thing that is happening here is. Even if I assume that, uh, even if I don't assume anything about you being closed, uniform continuity implies the function is bounded. All I need to assume is it is a, it is a bounded subset of uh, R. See, maybe it is so good that even if I don't assume that it is a uh, uniformly continuous, even if I don't assume it is a uh, uh, bounded, this might imply it is bounded. Is it is it the case? Can it be the case? So let us check. Let us check. Uh, that uh, if, let us take a function f from uh, u to r, u subset of r to r, 
and uh, let us not assume anything about uh, uh, you it may be unbounded but it's informally continuous so can i can i think of it, it being a uh, bounded function or not so uh, one subset of r that is uh, unbounded that i can think of is uh, just r itself <laughs> so let us take this function this is from function from r to r and it's informally continuous so do i have some example of informally continuous function do i have some example i'll do one example here and there's something else so let us take the identity function just x goes to x now now what do we want for this given epsilon positive we want to delta positive such that whenever x and y are less than delta we want fx minus fy to be less than epsilon but uh, the 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 image of x is x itself so we can actually remove this f part and simply write x and y so what we want is given epsilon positive there is a delta positive such that whenever x and y the difference is less than del del delta we want the difference to be less than epsilon one thing to do is just ask delta to be equal to epsilon right if delta is equal to epsilon then whenever this is this is case i mean these two are equivalent statements so the nice thing here is at least the identity function is non continuous so there are there is at least one example of involved continuous function now what is the image of this f of r is equal to r right so but r is unbounded so involved continuous function are not so good that even if the domain is unbounded the the, the range is uh, uh, bounded it is not like that even though the domain is uh, not closed if i assume it is uh, uh, bounded uniform continuity implies it is bounded so we we can relax the closed uh, closedness uh, of the domain not the boundedness of the domain to to conclude it is uh, bounded so it, it's not so good it is good to some extent <laughs> so the assumption that uh, the domain is bounded is necessary to conclude uniform continuity implies bounded uh nice so so that is about you know kind of functions uh maybe if i i'll add one or one or two uh, uh, one or two more properties in the in the lecture notes and some examples we, we will see in the lecture 16 this is lecture 14 lecture 15 is for some other example lecture 16 is for this kind of example in some continuous functions continuous functions now one more thing one more uh, idea that uh, that is uh, that we we conclude with the, we conclude the the continuous uh, functions part is the following so this is where we we pause our discussion about uniform continuous function we'll come back to this when the when, when there is necessity uh now there is one more idea that uh, we need to discuss before we we proceed to uh, differentiability of functions that is the following think about the way we discussed about uh, continuous function u is subset of r if is an affirm u to r we said for an element a belongs to u f is continuous at a if for every sequence in u that is convergent the image uh, is convergent and f x in converges to f of a so this is the definition of uh, the function being continuous at this element a now let us relax one condition what is it see one can of course talk about sequences in u that converges and one can also ask that the image being convergent sequence without referring to a belongs to u right even though a is a not an element of u even if i if i if i remove this condition that a is some element in r because it is convergent that it is convergent some element in r and and uh, i am only asking this that uh, x is a convergent sequence in u and a is some element in r to which this converge one can ask if this is convergent without without referring to f of a right f of a is uh, it's, it's not uh, i cannot talk about f of a because a is not an element of uh, u now we are interested in functions f from u to r 
with, uh, with this property that uh, sequence in u that converts to a corresponding sequence uh, the corresponding image is a uh, convergent. Uh, now one obvious question is to, to what? <laughs> to what? See there may be many sequences in u that converts to a, a is a fixed point. There may be many sequences in u that converts to a. Uh, and we are asking that it is convergent only, we are not saying anything about uh, the, the, the limit point. If it is only one sequence, we do we do not have to re refer the to the limit point to the uh, to the limit of this sequence, there may be many sequences. So, what we do is we, we, we add one more uh, data, we say that uh, all such sequences converge to same element. This is extra property, not uh, this is not part of the, the, the previously if I do not ask this condition, if I do not fix this element, then there may be sequences that converges to A and uh, there the corresponding image should come should may converge to different element, there is no reason why they converge to same element, right. So, now we are changing the definite, uh, we are changing the setup slightly. What we asked before is a uh, fixed element A in R, look at sequences in U that converts to A, make sure that the image is convergent, that is all we ask. Now, we are asking make sure they are convergent, all of them should converge to A only. This is this is uh, this is what we are treating as the nice nature of uh, the function f at this point A in R. This, this, this is not a new thing for you. Uh, this setup is uh, denoted in this terminology. Uh, I am sure most of you can recognize uh, this and uh, whatever I have said here, uh, I have said here this is simply this. I will explain one more time. Fix a subset of R and end the function from u to r, we say that uh, this an element a is a limit is a is the limit of f as x goes to this element a. If for every sequence in u that converts to a, the corresponding image sequence should converge to a. This is what uh, we mean when we say element a is the limit of f as x goes to a. See here something needs to be uh, clarified. First, I cannot talk about arbitrary element for which there is a there is a no sequence in U that converts to A. If there is no sequence that converts to A, I cannot talk about the corresponding image, right? So whenever I am writing uh, A here and and, uh, and 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 this, I am unconsciously assuming that uh, A is a limit point of U. What is limit point of U? an element uh, of R is said to be limit point of U if there is at least one sequence in U that converts to A. Otherwise, we cannot talk about uh, the, this property, right? The, this, the, whenever I am writing here, I am already assuming that there is, there is some sequence in U. So, I am just clarifying that the, the, the element that I am writing uh, here A belongs to R is not an arbitrary element of R, it is an element for which there is some sequence in u that converts to that element. Then I am asking that uh, for any such sequence in u whose limit is a, the corresponding image or uh, image sequence should be convergent, converts to a only. See suppose, let me, let me write down this in a different way. Let us ask that a is an element of u and this capital A is a f of A. So, I should change here also. So, here what I am asking is fix element A belongs to you, look at all sequences that converge to A, look at the corresponding image sequence, it should converge, converge to f of A, this is what is continuity rate. Right? So, here we are relaxing the condition that the element A is, a, is an element of the uh, element in the domain, right, that is the difference. 
between continuity and uh, this notion of limit. One can talk about limit of a function at an arbitrary point of R which may not be in the domain of U. So, first question that we need to ask ourselves is see what is the necessity to, uh, to, to think about uh, that kind of notion that uh, why do I want to think about uh, the, the property of a function at some point that is not in the domain of the, the function. See un unless, unless we see the necessity uh, there is no reason to proceed further. So, let, let me write down some symbol and uh, I am assuming you, you will be able to recognize that. So, let me let me take a function u to r and uh, fix some element a belongs to u slightly nicer the element and uh, see if you can recognize this symbol. Can you recognize what this is? This thing. If you fix the, the element a and this function f, this candidate now is a function of h. H can vary in, in uh, over some interval. This is a function of H, and this, by the first look, it doesn't seem to be defined at zero. Otherwise, we should be writing here as a one by zero or, or something by zero. This I don't know what it what it really means. I don't know what is one by zero of. Uh, I don't know what one by zero is. So, we are interested in functions. Whose, uh, who, uh, whose domain does not have uh, the, the, the corresponding uh, does not have some element and still we are looking for behavior of this function at towards that element. The, this is the differentiation. Uh, I, I assume that some, some of you might have recognized what this is. So, to talk about differentiation we need to have a notion of limit. Limit of a function at a point that is not in the domain of the function. Here we have a we have a function of h 0 is not an element in the domain of this function. Still we talk about this right and this we write as if it if it is nice so nice we write it as a brush derivative of f at a. So, we will come to this. And, and uh, now, now let us go, let us go back to the previous uh, thing. So, this is about limit of a function as uh, x goes to a, a is some element in the, a, a is an element in the limit point of, uh, a is the limit point of u, then one can talk about this notion of limit of f as x goes to a, it is a, it is a, a real number a in r, a real number with this property. For any sequence in u that converts to a, the corresponding image should converge to capital A. One obvious uh, uh, question that you need to ask yourself and uh, you need to answer yourself is it could be possible that there are two elements with this property. Right? Fixing, fixing uh, uh, element A, there may be two sequences, two, two elements right? Uh, that that uh, fx converges to A and also B. Can it be possible? No. Go back to sequence uh, uh, convergence and check. If sequences converge, it converges to single element. So there will not be any two elements to which the sequence converge. It's, so whatever I'm writing here, it is a it is a uniquely determined if it exists. So uh, we should say the limit of f as x goes to a, x is the uh, variable with which I'm writing the the, the function f. Now. See, this is determined, uh, this is described in terms of sequences. So, whatever is true for sequences, we should just copy paste here and uh, we should say that satisfies uh, the limit uh, properties also. Let us take two functions f and g from u to r, a is a limit point of u and limit of x goes to a, f of x is equal to a, limit of x goes to a, g of x is equal to b. What do you think this should imply? See, given f and g, one can talk about their, their addition. Right? f plus g is, of course, a function 
uh, from u to r one can ask see we have th these two limits exist one can ask if this limit also exist limit of the sum what do you think <laughs> they should be see it's about uh, what does this say f x n converts to a correspondingly g x n converts to b their sum converts to a plus b if I am talking about the sum and uh, I can vary all se uh, sequences uh, over the sequence that converts to a and then simply say that it is same thing as a plus b. So, whatever is true for the sequences just copy paste here and, and it turns out that it is true not just uh, plus you can take uh, multiplication also and uh, minus also and, uh, and uh, divided by f, f by g when, when something is non-zero think about what is what should be non-zero so, so when you can write this uh, f by g. So, this is about uh, limit of a function at a point which is not necessarily in the domain of the function. Now, as I said uh, we will we will come back we will come to this at when we deal with uh, differentiation. Uh, now, before uh, now uh, you should you should uh, look for, for some examples of functions uh, and uh, look for look for the this, this property compute the limit uh, limit of those functions at some points uh, that are not in the domain I, I give some I give some examples in the lecture notes and then we will and then uh, and then we will go back to the uh, differentiation there, there this is the this is the first step looking for limit of a function at a point that is not in the domain of the function is the is the first uh, basic ingredient to talk about uh, differentiation of a differentiation of a function and uh, that is all the yeah so next next week we will do some examples uh, next session we will do some examples of uh, sequences some computations in from super and all uh, in the next to next class, next session we will do some examples about continuity and uniform continuity and the lecture 17 we will start discussing about uh, differentiation of uh, real valued functions that is all.